Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is is my Amiga 1200 still in bits because I'm still playing around with the ice streak and I bought myself this from them. I should have really bought it at the same time as the ice streak but I didn't because I didn't have it in stock and then I was like mm, do I really need it because I've got HDMI sticking out through the RF mod that I did. Um, Ethernet I'm not particularly bothered about. I do want USB but on the Apollo.net case that I have, I, there's actually some cutouts just here. You can mess around and put USB just there and all that stuff. But I thought, right, get it because it is really meant to go along with the ice streak and it'll work. I know I was talking myself out of it in the previous episode, but I managed to talk myself into it again. Now, they do sell it with all the fancy cables that you need because out the back, you've got Ethernet, HDMI, and USB 2. Um, so you need the cables to mess around to come away from the ice streak into the back of this, which is obviously Ethernet, HDMI and USB. But they sell it with all those cables and a micro SD to full SD, I believe it is, um, so that you can access the micro SD that's hiding here. So you end up with something like this. Now mine is full uh, size SD to micro SD. I'm sure there's probably ones that also have micro SD. I'm not too sure if that's what they sell, but I've got the full size one. So I've got that cable. I've also got the little cable that you need for USB. I do want to talk about that one in a little bit more depth because that one you've got to be careful with. And I bought myself a small patch network cable, Ethernet cable. Happens to be Cat 6, you don't need that. Cat 5 will be enough. Cat 5e is probably a better idea because it will be shielded better and there's a lot of stuff going on inside here. And Cat 6 is shielded even more, but as I say, you don't really need it, especially for this short distance. But that's what I've got. And as I say, I've got a HDMI ribbon cable affair coming. Um, you probably see it as in purchases of so-and-so a month, but... Um, I'm not going to be installing it because I don't need it. But in the meantime, let's mess around and install this. So, you obviously have to take the case to bits to get in here. You need to get below the floppy. Now, with my GoX, it's screwed in through the back through a couple of screws. And lining them up to the 3D pin cage tray or whatever you want to call it for the GoX is a pain in the proverbial. So I'm actually going to do it a harder way so that that bit is easier because you have to try to line them up and everything. So what I'm going to be doing is just undoing these four screws and unplugging these cables so that I can get to blow the tray. Oh, and I'll be unscrewing this one down here as well so that I can lift it up a little bit and stick in the Ethernet cable because that's the one that's going to be a bit of a problem. But I should be able to still get to where this goes. If it really goes all wrong, I'm going to have to take the whole thing out anyway. But let's see what happens. So, unscrewing screws. So, managed to remove the GoX. I've got into here. I just need to pop out a little bit at the back. That's that done. And then we need to undo this screw here. Which has a nut on top, so be careful, don't do it above the Amiga because you don't want the nut to accidentally drop in. I highly recommend you do all this while the Amiga's turned off and unplugged and all that silliness because you really don't want to make a mistake. So there's the screw and nut involved with this. This pops in. Oh, it's not going to do it that way. There we go, we slide it in that way. Comes from inside in. So, while I'm here, I'm going to plug everything into it, quite frankly, I think. I'm going to take it back out again and plug everything in. But I'll do the USB one because that's the one that I wanted to mention about. Now, the USB port on the iStreak is this one. 
and you'll notice that there's a pin missing there that's perfectly fine but you'll also notice there's a pin missing on here now really what you want to do is make sure that the little notch on the cable is pointing upwards and you slide that on and then you see the notch on the other side will actually be the same way so you've got to imagine that your pins look the same if they were side by side like this so I'll do that again so you can see the pin the top right when it's held like this is missing top right is missing so the notch on here you can just about see there's a notch you know put that on there make sure the notch is is in so you have to sort of get it the right way around because if you do it the other way the notch will want to go next to the PCB and that will be wrong so we've got that in there Ethernet port in my case I'm going to go underneath so as much as I said I was going to wire it all up while it's in here I'm going to have to go below and we'll go below for the network port as well it's a bit fiddly Obviously, if you're doing your HDMI, you'd want to get that done as well. So, foldy fold fold. I might have to twist this round a little bit. I think it goes that way. Oh, no, it goes the other way. There we go. So, the pin's downwards. squash that down because we don't want it lifting up so now a little bit of a jump cut mess around get the cables in when it comes to screwing it in you don't want to do it straight away you want to get this in but if you have one of these SD things you're going to want to put that in first because that's sort of going to sit on top of where the back goes in so you want to slide this in so we still haven't screwed anything in yet pull this ribbon cable through oops hold it like that put that in there in fact I'm going to push it through where the network cable is That's going to be fine for me because of the way that I've got the casing for the GoX. It might be different for you when it comes to doing things, but I know I could mess around and make it. In fact, it will fit there. I'm going to make it go below the casing on here. Is that going to stab it when it's down? Yes, it would. No, no, there's just enough room. Yep, this is if it was made for it. So I can pull that through, go through the network cable, push that in there. Got far too much extra cable, but I'm sure we can squeeze all this in when everything's closed. So for now, I'm going to screw that back down because that's that done well, it would be if I put it in place there we go that's that flip this over hold that 
in place, get everything lined up. Pop it in, see, it just sits just above there. There's no particular bit to force it to sit there, but that's where it's going to be. Now we need to be able to get to the, the screw. So we need to push that forward. in there is it really Ooh. I think that's it now so you can see it's a bit fiddly need to see <laughs> what you get when your screwdriver is magnetic I'm trying to do everything on camera, but I'm going to screw it in a little bit, even though the bolt, or the bolt, I keep saying bolt, the nut isn't in place. There we go, the nut's in place. I'm holding it in place with my thumb just to get some hold on it. I can feel with my thumb that the nut's trying to turn, but it's not right so network per network port is in place USB HDMI SD card which is enough to move just in between the network and the USB so a bit of messing around now of how much cable is going to sit where a network port wanting to push the ice streak or the up obviously making sure that the ice streak is back on its edge connector correctly because you don't want that ruined flat cable might have been nicer for networking I got what I got another jump cut come to realize that I'm actually better off routing the USB cable instantly to the side underneath the cage there's just enough space and push it this way because the cables there instead of trying to come up down here it's better to go underneath so a bit of foldy foldy and it fits in there so again screwing this bit back down again okay so it's all screwed back in together again i've brought the hdmi cable back round let's make sure that the keyboard still fits in without squashing everything so let's line that up there Bit of squishy squish on there. That ribbon cable's okay to get squished a little bit. It's not a thing, but even so, there's plenty of room to bring the wires in for the LEDs from the top of the case. Jobs are good in. So yeah, that's how it looks out the back. 
it is possible to get 3D prints and have this sort of sat vertically um, at, the, at the back of the case. But apart from that, that's been nicely installed. You get a network cable in there, USB cable. I'll just get a couple of cables to prove to you that they work. Well, not work, but do fit. So, cables. Network cable. Fits. HDMI cable. Fits. And USB cable. One in there. Of course, they're brand new, so they're a bit stiff at the moment. So I can take that back out easy enough. HDMI easy enough. Networking's a bit of a pain, especially with this sort of plug of where it's got the lip to protect the the twangy bit to stuff, but that comes out perfectly fine too. So there we go, nothing's moved around. Now, as I say, it's a great idea to have all this here so that you don't have wires leading in going straight into the eye streak because you're going to wobble the eye streak around. Cables get pulled, we all know they do. Pets, dogs, children, mothers, fathers, other arse, friends, postmen, you know, whichever way cables get dragged and knocked all over the place. So, I hope that was of some interest. It sees and shows you that it's worthwhile getting them. I... In the realms of saving, I do think if you happen to be in a non-European country, you're probably better off buying the cables separately um, and waiting for slow boats from China because import taxes and all that sort of thing, it's an awful lot cheaper. Um, the device itself, though, seems great in the realms of that they've made it. It should all work. By all means, you know, you make sure they plug in, they test, they're working uh, before you just hey, don't install them and then go, yeah, it's working. Test them because if there's a problem, you need to be able to get back in touch with Apollo. But as I say, I hope that's of some interest. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, hit that like button. Look down below for the description. Join Discord. Throw some money to the world's the backing on the Patreon. But as always, happy gaming. <laughs>